Welcome back. Now, the state is expected to demonstrate consequences for South Africa's largest fraud. This in the Steinhoff case and in the absence of the one man who had all the answers, Marcus Yester. The focus has now shifted to former finance head Ben Lagrange, with a prosecutor seeking more evidence to show that he was actually in on the crimes. Editor for the Financial Mail, Mark Hattenfist, joins us now with greater perspective on how the case is progressing. Mark, always a pleasure. Good afternoon. Good to be here again. Now, Mark, I'm going to ask a question. It is for the conversation of accurate information around the Bryce stand. Uh, Marcus Yerstand, Marcus Yerster rather, is actually uh, late. Uh, you know, he isn't alive anymore. There's many, uh, many theories here about the fact that he could be hiding in an island here. But we've, been, we've got confirmation from the relative authorities uh, that that is not the case. Um, look, there are a lot of conspiracies flying around. That's inevitable. Um, I think it happened to other personalities that passed away recently. I won't mention them, but uh, yeah, so just part and parcel and with things like social media, things like this gain traction. So yes, um, I don't think those, those are true. I'm sure he is. Um, he has passed on. Uh, Wonderful. Let's get into the case now. It seems the NPA actually had a decent case the whole time. Uh, we got impatient because it took so long. But let's talk about uh, what they have presented uh, at this point uh, to show that they actually really were gathering evidence and really also, uh, you know, zoning in on the culprits here in the sign of a case. Yeah, I mean, let's just kick off first to say that this is a this is a massively complex case. Now, I didn't write the stories, you know, Rob Rose, Rob Rose wrote it. And Rob is a, if there is an expert in stand-up, Rob is the man. So I'm just relaying what he's written and what I try and understand from what he's written. And what I do know is it is, is incredibly complex. I uh, pity anyone who had digged through all this data, all the information. I mean, it, it is incredible, the, the, the convoluted structures offshore structures, local structures, and it's been going on for years. So it's a complete mess. So I have the sympathy for the MPA. I think under the circumstances, you couldn't ever expect them to rush this. Um, it really is incredibly interwoven and complex. And uh, But it does show that, yes, they are working on it. They're trying to get get headway. I think Mr. Yuster's demise, tragic demise, uh, threw a bit of a spanner in the works because now the kingpin is gone. You've got to find others to get answers. People do want answers. I think the investing, investment public deserves closure on the matter. Um, hopefully we will get that, but I think we're going to have to be quite patient, to be honest. In the absence of Marcus Justa, it does look like uh, the financial director uh, has uh, taken center stage. Let's talk about that, because I think uh, what's interesting here is the fact that even if he didn't, uh, you know, explicitly know that something uh, was going on, it, uh, we have some people saying that if he had just applied himself uh, as he should have, according to his uh, fiduciary duties, he would have picked up that something wasn't quite right. Yeah, sure. I think the JC already censured him on that. Um, look, I Obviously, I'd like to hear Mr. Lagrange's side of the story. Um, you know, it's he worked inside the structure. Um, when you read the things in Rob's story, and I hope readers will read it, I think it's an excellent, excellent story. You understand that, you know, people listen to what Marcus just said. He was a, a huge personality within the business. Um, I think I attended one or two stand-up presentations. I just remember the, the room gravitating towards him. Uh, you know, I think people didn't ask enough questions. Um, people trusted the guy. They thought he was a genius. He had things worked out. So, yes, I mean, whether whether Ben Lechranzi Le Le fell under the spell is, an, is, is, I suppose, one story. Did he apply himself properly? Was he, did he have his judgment clouded? Those all come out in the wash, I guess. Um, it's going to be very interesting once this, does, this matter does um, get to court and the public gets to hear what happened. Speaking about, uh, you know, uh, just uh, Marcus Jester and, uh, you know, his, um, his influence within Steinhoff there, when I was reading the article uh, for Financial Mail today, it became very evident that uh, it really was elaborate here. Yeah, I think there were six auditors uh, at some point, Mark, I read there. There was a company called TG Group and, uh, you know, there were invoices. It really was an absolute web. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, yeah. from that perspective here, if it means that authorities around the world will ever actually be able to admit that uh, very few of us had uh, the, the skill and acumen to have been able to pick something up like this, something like this up yeah look you, you raise an incredibly important point i mean let's just look at it from the perspective of investors um you can apply 
all the little mechanisms you do when you make an investment. But, you know, if someone wants to pull up, pull the wool over your eyes, they can probably do it and they probably still can. And I think Starnev is a case, uh, case in point. Um, you know, I, I do remember at one stage um, looking at the accounts and to be quite honest, I just thought I was, well, uh, you know, at most times I think I'm pretty stupid, but oh, I just couldn't make it a tail of it. I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very, very complex. You look at things like cash flow. They even got around that mm -hmm. with these things called facials. Yes. Um, you know, they, they fake the cash flow. I mean, you can't really make that up. So it's very difficult to figure it out. I suppose the rules apply, and it's very difficult if everyone's buying the share. And everyone was buying the startup share. It was listed in Frankfurt. Everyone is going for it. Oh, it's going to be part of this index. We've got to be part of it. You're going to miss out. You've got to go back to the basics. If you don't understand the business, maybe just stay away. And maybe that is the big lesson to learn from uh, the Steinhoff saga. Mark, before I let you go here, I do believe that there are people who are actually already, uh, you know, serving jail time. It's not in South Africa, it is in Germany. But I think an important part of telling the story, because so many people I think that everybody's kind of walking around scot-free. Yeah, look, that, that has happened, yes, um, that's in the story. <sighs> A little more prickly point, I suppose. Uh, the startup non-executive directors, some really important big people there. Mm. This happened on their watch as well. I always wonder about how answerable they're going to be. Um, questions that need to be asked there as well, I suppose. Well, Mark, a great story there in the financial mail, and we'll keep uh, speaking about the standoff saga until we see justice served. Thank you for your time. Today, it's always a pleasure having you on a business lunch. That was Mark Hassenfuss. He's editor for the financial mail.